is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. The aftermath of every social revolution brings about change. Cultural norms and landmarks shift as our minds and hearts expand beyond the familiar. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose in the land of the living. This is our time to renew, revive, and restore the hope lost to the busyness of life. This is our time to dig again and rebuild from the storms of our past on a solid footing that holds. Welcome to The Foundation. The Foundation. The Foundation of Hard Grant is brought to you by Alive, Bomb for Bones, Burger King, Commonwealth Bank, Epic Battery, Grand Bahama News, Popeyes, Printmasters, and Ross Electric Motors. Foundation. The Foundation. The Foundation. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM radio, Howard Grant in your company, The Foundation. It is a beautiful Monday afternoon, live and in full effect. We are at the six-month mark. We are at the halfway mark. Welcome to the month of June. It is a beautiful thing to be in your company, ladies and gentlemen. If you made it this far, my God, you're living. Slap yourself in the chest. Give God praise. You're still here. Talk to me. You could have been dead. I could have been me. But you're still here. Grateful to be able to be in your company today, ladies and gentlemen. Today is June 3rd. If you're celebrating a birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, to you, wherever you are, we want to say happy birthday to you from me and mine to you and yours. Hoping that you celebrate your birthday well, hoping that you do well. And uh, kind of move with this sort of a passion and determination over the next 365 days around the sun to find yourself in a better position next year. Yeah, come on, talk to me. And you know something? Let's just have this kind of a clear conversation. You can't do that by yourself. I know that we have uh, all manner of things set up in this life that uh, gives us this facade, this sort of an idea that we can be able to attain, acquire these things by ourselves. When we recognize the necessity for being able to attach ourselves to relationships to move forward, my God, um, it's very clear that you got to be able to bow, surrender to supremacy. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so very, very kindly for being able to tune in with us today. It's a beautiful day. Grateful to be in your company after a hell of a weekend. Can I say that? Can we talk like this? Can we can we be decent? A listen to me. This thing was so exhausting. I don't know if I sleep yet. I tried to sleep yesterday, right? I that I I still couldn't sleep. I tried to sleep. All right. It was a long weekend and um. um Great results. I'm telling you, great results. We're going to talk about those things today. All the information's in the paper. Make sure you pick up your uh, Guardian newspaper before we go there. Got to shout out my good, decent people over at Da Vinci's Printing and Innovators. They are located on Village Road in the Village Road Shopping Plaza. They get everything laid out for you. Make sure you go and check them out. Uh, they're right there on the side of the bank. When you go inside there, just let them know that uh, the foundation told you all about them. Uh, guys, if you have these sort of an ideas in your heart, in your mind, if you have a passion, if you've been scribbling something, if you're a faith-led person and you know what, you want to be able to kind of write the vision and make it plain to move in that direction, I always tell you, go down to Da Vinci Printing and Innovators. They got everything available for you. If you got to get that graphic done, if you got to get that seed envelope done, if you got to be able to make the proposal pop, if you got to do these things, please go down there. It's DaVinciPrinting242.com, DaVinciPrinting242.com. And they can be more than happy to assist you. They get everything laid out. It is absolutely phenomenal what they do and what they can do for you. Connect with them and then you can be able to see some beautiful things happen. As Da Vinci Printing and the Innovators also got to shout out my good, decent people over at, at um, 
AFS insurance agents and brokers, AFS insurance agents and brokers, because go down there and check them out at number 407 Blue Hill Road South, right across the street from the Golden Gate Shopping Plaza. You can be able to see them in there. They told me that they're looking for, uh, they get some administrative slots available. So if you're listening in and you're looking for a job, go call Ethric Bell, 3411-AFS, 3411-AFS, and he can be more than happy to assist you. He's going to process you. You can go through a rigorous um, uh, cause you know, he has specifics. You can go through a rigorous process, but if you get the job, just know that you're going to be able to come out there with superb customer service and preparation to be able to move on to any other space in your life. So, uh, reach out to them, AFS insurance agents and brokers. And if you're in the market for some insurance, got to reach out to them for SDs, taxis, liveries, they do in-house financing and they're open on Saturday. So reach out three, four, one, one AFS, three, four, one, one AFS. I got to say congratulations to Dr. Sands. Um, uh, in his particular capacity, has retained the position as chairman of the Free National Movement, as chairman of the Free National Movement, winning handsomely two to one. Um, his victory was 431 to Ellsworth Johnson's 221. And so um, uh, we know that it is a wonderful thing. I had an opportunity to be able to talk to Dr. Sands over the weekend. I extended congratulations to him and, uh, you know, extended an opportunity to be able to always host him and have a good conversation about, you know, what the organization is doing and what our expectations are for the organization to be able to have a good con a conversation and discourse as we continue to be able to move forward. It was an electrifying time. I want to congratulate, like I said, Dr. Duane Sands. I also want to congratulate uh, Ellsworth Johnson for being able to be such a statesman and being able to repose his posture and really being able to remain committed in this steadfast in this kind of a position, uh, remaining faithful, remaining steadfast, uh, as it relates to his family, uh, his convictions, his God, and definitely being able to do what he needs to do for his organization. I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for the opportunity to carry both of you guys, uh, your campaign. I want to congratulate all those persons. I also want to congratulate Dr. Uh, Hubert Alexander Minnis for being able to take on such a strong position. We know that we didn't see him show up on Friday night. There, I mean, I'm sorry, Saturday night. There was, uh, quietly, there was no expectation. I didn't expect him to show up. I know that he showed up earlier that day uh, as it relates to voting, and he showed up just after, can I say this? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Just after Hubert Ingram uh, was speaking to our news. And um, it was a peculiar time. I just want to say that. This is um, some strange times in politics in this country. And um, I think I want to take a, a couple, I guess, throughout the course of time, we're going to be able to identify this because um, this amplification of me and I has uh, foreshadowed and overshadowed the, not the actual campaigns, because I think Pintard's campaign was very strong and inclusive. I think Dwayne Sands' campaign uh, was very strong and inclusive. Uh, you know, everybody's campaign was strong and inclusive, but those that work in the background, <laughs> those eyes were strong. Dr. Minister's campaign was strong with I. I can do it. I, I, I. And uh, we see former Prime Minister Dr. Hubert, I mean, sorry, um, former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram take on that same posture. He said, no, 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 no the blood is not bad. Huh? We, we get friends. I caused him to be Prime Minister. Uh, it's because of me right? It's because of me he's the prime minister. It's because of me he was the leader. It's because of me. And that's a strong thing. We know that you set up um, sort of the framework for these particular things to happen and you made the right connections. But I, I think that we neglect even um, an iota of faith and this sort of a predestiny that exists in these particular spaces. Can I say that? Is it okay that we talk like this? Is it is it enriched with this sort of a faith that you seek to reject? Can I say that you cannot on one side have relentless conversations about uh, God and faith and religion and spirituality in politics, but after the results is unraveled and we see men and women acquiring things, then you say, it's because of me. It's peculiar. That's why we can't hang out with Jethro. Amen. I just want to be decent as possible as I say this. We can't hang up with them. We got to, lest you say, you make me rich. I got to be able to move on. And so a lot of things are unraveling in these particular times, in these days, as we see these things. But I just, you know, reject that sort of an idea. 
And I still want to be able to celebrate with the Free National Movement because uh, the air was electric. And one of the things that we had a conversation for, with, uh, guys, make sure you check out the Foundation 242 on, face, on Facebook, the Foundation 242, and go check me out, the foundation 242com and you can be able to find out more information there. You can be able to see the entire live. We had great, great uh, commentary. Uh, a great deal of my friends showed up. We had um, Bradley Smith. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Omar, Omar Smith show up. Um, we had uh, Leonard Sands show up. We had uh, Ethan Adderley show up. We had Kyle Bethel show up. We had so many persons kind of just show up and gave us good discourse. We had Kenyatta Gibson show up. Uh, there was a lot of persons that actually showed up and really gave us good discourse and good conversation. And so um, the one thing that remained true is whether or not the free national movement can retain this momentum, can retain this enthusiasm, can retain this sort of a, a gleeful posture position and the state that they're in right now as you're leading towards 2026. This is crucial because we know that there's ebbs and flows, highs and lows. But this should be your upward movement. This should be your sort of uh, moving towards that position uh, and that pinnacle, right? So you could be able to bring people in. A lot of persons now, their eyes are focused and they're fixed on the free national movement and their posture and position and trying to be able to figure out whether or not this is the time I should join the organization. Guys, I want you to be able to be a part of the conversation. It's going to be you and I today, 323-6232. 325-4316-325-4259, anywhere for the Family of Islands, 242-300-5720, or hit me up, 422-4796. Quick commercial break. Be right back after this. For fast, reliable, and impactful printing services, look no further. Let Printmasters bring your masterpiece to life. We stand by our quality products that is second to none. Our affordable pricing and friendly, efficient staff makes Printmasters the ultimate choice for all your printing needs. We can deliver any type of printing services, from banners to booklets to business cards. You name it, we can print it. Let Printmasters bring your masterpiece to life. Located in the Nassau Guardian Building, telephone 302-2361. Great news. Ron's Electric Motors' new location on Cowpen Road, right next to Island Luck, is open Saturdays and Sundays. So for those needing repairs on electric motors, generators, welding machines, water pumps, battery charges, electric lifts, transformers, and power tools, Ron's Cowpen Road location can have you up and running on weekends. Don't forget, you can still visit Ron's Electric Motors on Wolf Road and Claridge Road, and now Ron's new location on Cowpen Road. Dial 356-0249 or 323-5267. Foundation with Howard Grant showing up live and in full effect, guys. I'm so happy to be in your company now. 96.9 FM radio. Howard Grant and your company being able to chop this thing down. Long weekend, a hell of a weekend. And uh, congratulations to all those persons who were successful. I don't have all. Um, um, Michael, I should text you. I should have said something. Uh, if you have those results, please send it to the phone, 827-0111. I'll reach out to her and see if I can be able to get that to call everyone's name on air so you can be able to see that. And congratulations all to all those persons. Also, congratulations to... Patricia Ann Clear in the PLPSC that she's retained her position as Women's Associate. She's my good friend. Can I say that? She's my very good friend and my church sister. So um, uh, congratulations to her and, and the retention of that position. I'm telling you, it has been a very, very strong weekend for those persons. I smiled. When I came back in, I smiled because the indecency is rich. And I just want to be able to say that. Uh, Howard, I see Rodney showed up and got rolled out. <laughs> I just, I, this is what it is. Um, uh, it's good for him. He's too disgusted, and I hope that they revoke his membership if he was one, right? A uh, member of the Free National Movement. Guys, give me a call. 323-6232-325-4316-325-4259. Anywhere from the Family of Islands, 242-300-5720. Hit me up. Or 422-4796 on the text. I saw Minis having a hell of a time yesterday over at Richard Johnson's. Um, uh, and Richard, my God, I was I was so tired, I forget to come. I honest to God, please look, forgive me. Because I really did want the pickled scone salad. I'm hoping that you have some. I don't know if you got some still today. My family and I were absolutely exhausted. 
right? And the thing about it is, can I say this? I'm going to share something with you guys. My my son is uh, getting to be a big man now. I just want to be as decent as possible. Um, um, I know he don't want me to say this, but I'm going to say this. And this ain't to bring no shame to him. I'm just saying, all of us gone through this, right? So I brought him out, and he was supposed to be responsible to help me move my props. If you check me out the Foundation 242, you can see I had all my props, right? So I got my table, I got my plants, I got my everything. I got my, all my camera guys, everything, all everything's out there, right? And uh, it, this really heavy stuff, right? So I said, okay, come and go with me. You can make some money tonight. Did Daddy put something in your pocket? Praise God. So he says, okay, no problem, Daddy. Let's go. So he's helping me now, right? But yeah, I'm watching him. He getting his hair done. He want to do this. He want to do that. He didn't clean up clothes. Daddy, can I buy a shirt? So forth and so on. I said, hold on, listen. I, I didn't know. Stage hand is get fresh. What's <laughs> why the stage hand getting so fresh? What's going on, right? Anyway, so he goes up with me, and um. Uh, he goes missing. He goes missing for, I was there for at least about five hours, right? And uh, just um, uh, shooting. I was broadcasting. I was streaming live for about five hours, right? Maybe a little bit more. And I didn't see my son. And then he shows up at the very end, right? And he passes. And so if you look at the, <laughs> if you look at the, if you look on the, um, um, on the live stream, right? At that particular time, Leonard and, and, um, um, Leonard and Garth, I'm sorry, right? So they're sitting to the left of me. Leonard and Garth, they both turn their heads at the same time, right? And, you know, they, they keep following, 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 both heads at the same time. And I'm just talking into the camera, but I can see them in my peripheral. And I'm trying to figure out, what the hell are they looking at? Because I saw my son, but I didn't really see him, right? So I said, what are they looking at, right? And they laugh on camera. And they say, oh, it, boy, your son your son is a dangerous boy. And so I said, what happened? On camera. I said, what happened? And so he says, he out here talking to the woman. I said, what? Boy, how isn't she pretty too? I said, so we live. What are you doing? My boy had me waiting an hour and a half till after everybody gone home. He was the last people to leave. Because I'm waiting on my stage hand to come and he out here cutting up. So I'm just telling you, it was really an exhausting time. It was really a bag of emotions. Uh, my mother was here. My uncles was here. Uh, we had a truly, truly awesome time on Sunday. Uh, we broke bread. I brought some people over to the house. I made some. I gave some invitations, but some people was extremely, extremely tired. Hopefully, we could be able to do this again. And uh, people came over, and we have a beautiful time. It was an exhausting weekend, but not so much for Doctor Minnis. I just want to be decent as I say this, because they sent me the pictures of Doctor Minnis dancing on Montague, and I said, look at the what. Let's see, sure, I got to rub my eye to see if this really Dr. Minnis pulled the phone close to look at this thing. And Dr. Minnis is celebrating. And, and you know, I'm looking at that and I'm saying um, that he should do, that he should do, that that his life is still here, that he still has opportunity. I think they uh, they they pulled one on him, though. Can I say that? I am, um, I just want to be decent as possible as I say this. I like what they did. I just, I want to be, okay. What I mean by that, I'm not talking about the speculations. I'm not talking about this kind of um, this accusation, right? I don't, I, these, these accusers that identify one person or another saying that Dr. Minister's camp did this, that, and so forth and so on, or Pintard's camp has done this, this, and this for the ACM, so forth. We've dealt with that. We've rolled it out. We've had um, um, uh, both the chairman and um, um, the candidate for chairman, um, Ellsworth Johnson, both speak to these particular things. Right, And so we had a very clear conversation. But I must say to you, I like the strategy. I like the strategy. I thought it was superb to catch a man when he's not prepared. We could clearly see that Dr. Minnis was leading towards a campaign that was inevitable, that was clear. We could see from the rollout of his book, from one church to another, being able to give a little piece of his life beyond his time in office, taking you back to his human side, being able to break the walls down of the tribulation that he endured or the indifference that happened during his time as prime minister and taking you back to his childhood, taking you back to a time that you could really be able to put flesh back on this sort of an iron fist that he had in a, this kind of a concept of his rule. He did, he, listen to me, if they had waited, I don't know whether or not they was going to be able to beat him. 
Dr. Minnis indicates that he has two more books. So we're looking forward to those particular books. And then um, the book will roll out uh, one from a medical standpoint and one from a, another one from a political standpoint. So we're waiting for those things and waiting to see those things. But we recognize this was a good play. I said, okay, this, this, this is dangerous. He has to let people know who he is. And so when he came up with his book to talk more specifically about the determination of uh, his sort of a will and power and so forth, the power of determination, it reminded me of the audacity of hope. And I said this to him. I said, this book is eerily familiar to the concept associated with the audacity of hope. Now, I won't get a little superstitious with you. I do. Just a little bit. Dr. Minnis has for the past five years, four to five years, we've seen Dr. Minnis take on the same course as Donald Trump. We've seen his defiance. We've seen his posture. We've seen his language when he indicated that this is fake news that mimics and mirrors what we've seen come from Donald Trump. We've seen that. Whether or not anyone would like to say it and really be able to put it on display, listen to what I'm saying and contrast the two. Dr. Minnis has run a campaign and found success similar to how Donald Trump in his position has run his campaign. And as we're looking at this, we see uh, there's an expectation during the time of Donald Trump's run uh, towards pre uh, his presidency. We saw it and we said, I don't believe he's going to win. And just like that, he won. Dr. Minnis, just like that, he won. Similar circumstances, significant tribulation, victory, inevitability. We couldn't believe it. We started to dub him um, uh, and, and try to ask questions, even from a spiritual standpoint. Was he called for this time? Is he called for these particular things? Oh my God, how is he standing still? He's supposed to be gone and still here. Found himself in the position as prime minister. Two days before the election. Uh, I'm sorry, the FNM convention. Two days before the FNM convention, Trump is found guilty of all 34 counts. My mind instantly went to Dr. Minnis. Instantly. I said, oh my God, if you believe in omens, this ain't a good omen. This is a bad omen for Dr. Minnis. If he has mimicked his campaign, if he has mirrored his campaign to what he's seen, uh, he's never pronounced this, but this is what we observe. If he has mirrored his campaign against what Donald Trump has done, then this is not going to be a good thing for him come Saturday. I said that to myself. I think I mentioned it Wednesday. I think I mentioned it Wednesday I think I, or, or Thursday, one or the other, right? And Friday, he didn't show up. He didn't show up. Can I say something? I didn't expect him to. I created an atmosphere and a posture to be able to accommodate him in the event that he decided to. We've committed to this for a very long time, and so that space was his and his alone, right? And um, I knew that there was extenuating circumstances that he would not want to be able to speak to these things. We spoke with him prior to, and I said to him, I'm going to ask you why you keep saying me, 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 I, I, I. I am going to ask you about this concept about the ACMs and whether or not you're setting it up for an idea if you are defeated to say, this is why I'm defeated. I said, this is the things that I'm going to talk about. I say, I have a responsibility. This is what I'm going to ask you. I said, and I'm going to ask you whether or not you will step down before the convention tomorrow. He said, okay, Howard, all right. And they call and say he could make it. I had a responsibility. I'm not going to sit here and, you know, play patty cake. I'm going to ask because you ask me. And so we're going to have to ask these particular questions. There was no expectation. Now, I never knew Dr. Minnis to be a yellow belly. I never know him to cower. I never know him to step back and chicken out. But the state and the nature of politics causes a man to do peculiar things when the pressure's on. Dr. Minnis stood strong and take his cut behind like a man. He lost 3-1, a resounding, 
undeniable position from the free national movement. And simultaneously, we heard the country celebrate the free national movement for the separation from Dr. Minnis. I thought it was crazy. I thought it was absolutely crazy. Is there, and this is a question for you, is there a general sentiment now that exists on the streets, that exists in your corners, wherever you are, that said, thank God Dr. Minnis is gone? Is that sentiment live and well? Are people being able to say these things? And what's coming after it? What's coming after, thank God, Dr. Minnis is gone? Are persons now saying that they're looking at the free national movement optimistically? Looking to lend their support to the free national movement? How are persons viewing Michael Pintard? Are persons saying that there is an expectation for him to do well? Talk to me about it. The PLP has taken on a very strong position. To talk about um, uh, Michael Pintard, as is in the papers this morning, guys, you can just pick up, pick up the newspaper. PLP savages Pintard over the criticisms in his speech. Um, though Prime Minister Davis is in a social media post on Saturday night, congratulated uh, Michael Pintard for holding on to the leadership of the free national movement and expresses hope that he can become a consecutive partner for change. My God, I like that. I'm, I'm constructive, I'm sorry. Constructive partner for change. A, uh, a press release issued on Sunday for the Progressive Liberal Party took a different tone, savaging Pintard, for what the party termed attack on Davis's administration policies. If you did not have an opportunity to listen back to what Michael Pintard says, you got to. Uh, I liken it to the victory as a prime minister and sort of a preamble to um, the governor general's speech. Can I say that it was lengthy, but it had significant meat in it. It was lengthy, but it had strategic and significant meat that spoke to almost every subsector in our country. This is what we wanted from leadership. I mean, comprised, I mean, compressed rather, put it together. But this is what we're looking for leadership. We're looking for substance. We're looking for truth. We're looking for strength in these particular stats. And um, if this momentum is retained and they could be able to move in that direction, I dare say that the free national movement will be successful in the next general, if they could retain this momentum, if they could retain this position where they continue to be able to pull in the disenfranchised, the fringe organizations, so forth and so on, if the free national movement can do this, I dare say success and victory at the polls at the next general election is almost guaranteed. They have pulled in a great deal of people and it has actually attracted a great more. There are conversations going on all around about this sort of an idea that says, Howard, the FNM looking good, boy. Howard, the FNM looking good. I see you guys are texting, but you ain't calling. If you want to give me a call, please do that. 323-6232, 325-4316, Anywhere for the family of violence, 242-300-5720, or hit me up, 422-4796. The lines are wide open if you want to be able to do that. Howard, I noticed that you congratulated and called everyone's name except Michael Pintard. Come on, you got to stop it. You got to stop it. Congratulations to Michael Clifford Pintard. I said that to him five times, even before, <laughs> listen to me, even before the nominations came through. I'm truly uh, grateful and happy for Michael Pintard. He and I had a heart to heart before all of this thing happened a few weeks back. And I wanted to remind him uh, about the inspiration that he and Chivago Lang has had on my life. And I needed to have that conversation with him. And I did so. As a young man, um, um, no matter you know, the rhythm of their speech, no matter even if their voice shook in, their, in the onset of what they did, uh, to be able to see youth in parliament, to be able to see youth in representation, to be able to see youth being able to be identified by uh, a strong leadership in this country was a representation that the opportunity is inevitable for me to be able to get in there. Listening to Michael Pintard, listening to Shivago Lang as a young man, 
said to me, I got to be able to do, I, I, got, to, I got to do better. I got to strengthen myself. I got to get prepared. And I moved towards that. He's always been an inspiration. His victory is a very clear representation to the next generation that our time is afoot. Our time is now. And so we're hoping that he galvanizes his energy to move forward and make those particular things happen. Don't be indecent with your text. Amen? Don't be indecent with your text. Be decent. It says, then after you came from back for the break, you just said, congratulations to you won, but you still haven't called Michael Pintard's name. What's up with that? And I think that that is a poor taste uh, to not show up um, to the evening convention that confirmed he's not a true leader. I'm sure you're talking about um, Dr. Minnis. There's no expectation that he would have done that. I don't know. Which you want him to show up so people can say, boo, boo, boo. Come on, man. Let's be decent. Telephone call on the line. Call on the line with his live. Go ahead. Hey, great show. Sure, sure. How are you doing? Thank you, man. What's happening with you? Boy, I know you in when in the country. Don't hear this, right? But Dr. Minnis actually has one more shot at being leader. Follow me on this area, right? If Dr. Minnis actually, uh, he has a Hail Mary shot at being leader. If, if Michael Pintard failed to be brave at the election, right, the party will automatically gravitate back to Dr. Minnis. So that's his Hail Mary shot right there at being leader. So he actually still has a shot. How do you think about that? The party rejected him. The party has never rejected Hubert Ingram. The party rejected him. This is a rejection from the party. No matter if you say it's been designed by Hubert Ingram, it's been designed by those people in the background to get rid of him, it's been designed by the people in the Eastern Road, I don't care what your speculations are. It's up to me to vote. Nobody could swing me to vote. I could swing you. It's, yeah, man, I got you straight, man. You're covered, man. I can support you. And vote contrary. If I'm convicted that this is what I need to do, I'm going to do that. 75% of the people in the organization who make choices and decisions for the organization chose to get rid of Dr. Minnis. They chose that. That was their choice. What was more scary for me is if Dr. Minnis won, whilst everyone in the Free National Movement was wearing a Pintard shirt. That was a, I was afraid of that. I'm, I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. I said, Jesus God, I see Dr. Minnis keep, keep getting forward. Why would he keep going forward? I said, Dr. Minnis ain't stopping. I spoke with him and I said, Doc, you know where your number's coming from? He said, oh, yes, Howard, we get support, but, you know, people are being threatened and so forth and so on. I'm sure that he's going to be able to expound upon that. If not, you know, let it be. It's, it's over and dead. It's done with. You don't have to talk about it anymore. But I kept asking him. I said, Doc, are you, you sure you know where your number's coming from? He says, yeah, Howard, we know where our number's coming from, but people are being threatened. Some people have called me. Um, uh, they say they can't support me no more because they've gotten calls from Pintard, so forth and so on. He and I spoke, right? And I said, well, Doc, that's peculiar. I said, because you're a smart man. You're, you're an intelligent man. You're a successful man. That's what me and him talking. I said, so you can't retain the type of numbers that you've retained and find the type of success that you've found by being able to make decisions that can lead you into your demise. So you had to know. And being able to understand the landscape of things, you had to know where your numbers are coming from. He said, yes, Howard. I said, okay, no problem. And I, I got scared. I said, I said to my wife, I said, baby doll, listen. If the Free National Movement wearing Pintard shirt and vote for Dr. Minnis, what does that say about the Free National Movement? That it's even scarier than you could imagine. Because this is an organization of cutthroats if that happens. I said, I wait with bated breath to see what's going to happen. And sure enough, those shirts translated to support. And Pintard won handsomely. There's no more chances for Dr. Minnis from a political standpoint to be able to find himself back at the seat of power in the free national movement. That could never happen again. Never. That could never happen again. The reason I say that is because Hubert Ingram has never been rejected by his organization. He has stepped down several times. And they continue to cheer for him to come back. Every time he steps on the scene, it's the fanfare. Every time. Every time you see him, it's with the contingent. Every single time. He's never been defeated 
in the organization. Neither has Perry Christie been defeated in the PLP from that particular standpoint. He's been defeated at the polls from the general election standpoint and stood down in his convention in his, um, uh, um, uh, as a stalwart member within the confines of the PLP. This is a different scenario entirely. Dr. Minnis has been rejected by his organization. He didn't even reach the general public. His organization rejected him. We could get deep and identify the people on his council in Kalani who has gone against him. This is a very clear position. And the Free National Movement is saying we're grateful for the opportunity. Michael Pinton has extended uh, uh, congratulations to him for the introduction of technology in the constituencies, for the introduction of uh, um, um, catastrophic health insurance and health uh, uh, being able to help in those particular areas. He's congratulated him for what he has done and being able to lead the party for the fourth time to victory from a national standpoint. And he says, when the time is right, we would like to be able to thank you to thank you, obviously, with a Rolex watch, because that's absolute retirement. When you get your watch, that means your time is done. And he served well. And I do believe that he has a great deal to offer. But to say that he could, listen, he could throw two Hail Marys, no one's going to catch that. I just want to be as decent as possible as I say this. I believe that his time has come and gone. But the free national movement continues to be able to live on. Let's take a next telephone call. Call on the line. Go ahead. Hey, Howard. Hey, what's happening, baby? I wait to attain that because you wait to hit me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, and I, uh, didn't I say so, Howard? Yeah. You know, if, if you, you have to, I don't understand how um, Dr. Menes is, is reading things and whoever it is that he trusts so much to give him this lean advice, like calling the early election. You understand me? These things, these people, he needs to change them. Listen to the noise in the market if you will get the right price for your fish. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Like I said, I, I love our, our Dr. Minutes, but this is not his time to come back. People are still hurting from the laugh, and like he's saying, some of the, well, some of the persons were threatened. How much persons were threatened? You see the difference in the number? I'm sure they ain't threatening that amount of people, mm -hmm. if they threaten any at all. I don't feel like they can just go around and, and, and fling a wild threat like that, knowing that it, it, it might backfire. So if anybody was threatened, I don't think it's still that much for them to even catch up. Well, I, I see, who, who called him and indicated that they were threatened had close ties to him, okay? They had mm -hmm. very close ties to him. And they had to show their support outright. I just want but to be very clear with you. But I don't feel like that was actually the case, you know. I just feel like they didn't want him to feel bad if they didn't vote for him. So they had to they had to say something to try and, and, and throw it off. Because that's how that's how some behemoths are, you know. We're not gonna outright tell you we don't like you. We just gonna try to find a way to dance around. And at the end of the day, you figure it out that, oh, crap, she never did like me, eh? Listen, yeah. I can say this to you, right? And I really do appreciate your telephone call. Thank you so very kindly for that. I want to say this to you, and I want to say this to all persons, right? This was one of the heaviest campaigns the free national movement levied internally that I've ever seen, that I, in my lifetime, that I've ever seen. Now, I'm sure that it was a significant campaign when uh, Hubert Ingram was joining the organization. I'm sure that it was. 92, 97 was a no big campaign. They've already been able to uh, uh, lay assurance and that sort of satisfaction with uh, Hubert Minnis leadership after the victory of 1992 and what he's wrote. Missing, they, they align themselves in significant. That's where he started to build significant collateral. I tell you this. He brought his collateral over. He brought his couple sacks over from the PLP. What he's done in terms of being able to ensure that Bala retains a particular position, found himself strengthened, got fired, started his newspaper, did all those particular things, found himself uh, a big given an opportunity, came over to the Free National Movement, used his strategy, used his insight. And I'm sure that this was divine. This was spiritual, right? Flesh and blood did not reveal to him these things. My God, this was spiritual. 
for him to take on the position, for the free national movement to take the country when it did, at the time it did, not just for this country, but what was happening around the world. Hubert Ingram was the man for that time. There could have been no other. Hubert Ingram was the man anointed for that time. I believe that. I believe that. I believe that, and based upon the strategy, the approach, the openness to these particular things, I knew that flesh and blood did not reveal these concepts to Hubert Ingram. All right, so the party accepted that this was a divine thing. They accepted Hubert Ingram in 92. They accepted Hubert Ingram in 97. They accepted Hubert Ingram in this particular position, and Hubert Ingram, had, they, he now released the proverbial oil on Tommy Turnquist's head and said, Tommy, go forward. And the party accepted the anointing of Tommy Turnquist in that particular position. And when he came back and revoked the thing, they accepted that. There has been no significant fighting. There was no long conversation, no long back and forth for any of these things. Hubert Minnis was always also the recipient of this proverbial anointing from Hubert Ingram. He was. But he turned cat gut, that's what Grammy Demis say, on him in the midst of it. And as a result of that, Hubert Ingram now, my God, if y'all want to talk, let's talk. Hubert Ingram now and those persons who support him for the very first time had to campaign internally to ensure that we could put this to bed now. And that's what they did. This was nothing else other than that. This was just sheer campaigning and strategy. You have to look at this. This isn't no cheating, no nothing. This is politics 101. Campaigning, touching people, asking direct and clear for support, and they got it. That's what it is. I don't, I don't believe this kind of a notion that people were threatened. I don't believe that. Nobody know what I can do in the booth. Nobody. Now, I got some speculations that say, Howard, they didn't even count the ballots. Howard, they didn't count the ballots post. Some people weren't registered on the list. So that, listen to me. Look at this blowout, man. This is a blowout. Almost everyone in every subsector got blown out of the water. So your speculations for one or two, maybe three or four things that happened that is indifferent had nothing to do with the general consensus that existed in the free national movement on Saturday, May 25th. Dr. Minna showed up to Aaron Bailey Park to no fanfare. He sat under my tent. He came to me and my guy just... Uh, uh, had to pull out the plugs and do anything. Dr. Minnis came. His foot was two steps too short. And I felt so bad because I wanted to give him that honor as prime minister, give him that honor as a member of parliament, give him that honor as a former leader to have a conversation with him. My guy set up and he was. He said, Howard, I'm sorry. I got to be able to go. I had to go to the cancer ball. I can't fight him for that. But what I saw on the ground when Dr. Minnis was there is that people turned their back to him. That was extremely disrespectful, but it spoke to a charged environment to reject him come next week. And that is exactly what we saw. Ain't no two ways about it. Let's be decent about this and have a very good conversation. Let's not make up nothing. The Free National Movement decided to relieve themselves of Dr. Minnis. Now, why? Why they've done that is a different conversation. Did they do that with the Bahamian people in mind? Did they do that with this sort of an idea that he's not the man for this time? Did they do that with the memory that says, I remember when you lock us down? Did they do that with this concept that says, I remember your arrogance, your condescension? Did they do that with these things in mind? Or... Were they attracted to a vision, a concept, an idea, to youth, to inclusion that Michael Pintard cast? That's just all the clear questions that we're going to have. And when we're talking like this, I don't want to be speculative. I tell you, what I've learned over the past two weeks blew my mind because I thought I knew. It blew my mind. I thought I knew why what happened happened. I didn't have any significant disdain for Dr. Minnis after these last two weeks. I understood why he did what he did. And I'm hoping one day he's having, he'll be able to have a real conversation about that. 
I'm hoping one day he'll have a real conversation about it. It's the people. This is why I had an early election. FNMs know why. They know why. Carl Comer knows why. Nigel Lewis knows why. They know why Dr. Menace went to an early election. It blew my mind to find out. Now, how are you going to talk about that? Leave that for Dr. Menace. Let him talk about that. But I understand why he did what he did. Because this is a game of chess. Not checkers. And like my good friend Nita says, this is a horse race. Ain't no jack in this. You got to be clear about your position. You have to be clear about your approach. And on how you're going to get to victory. Michael Pintard and all those who supported him, they identified their objective, they stretched out their strategy, and they executed with supremacy. Superb execution and inevitable victory. They're now enjoying that. Michael Pintard is the leader of the Free National Movement, and he's seeking to be the prime minister of this country come next general election. Guys, I'm going to take this commercial break, uh, get to news, and be right back after this. Join me after this, guys. I'm going to take this commercial break. Be right back after this. Foundation. The 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 foundation. is available every Tuesday in the Nassau Guardian. You can buy your local paper at Freeport Convenience Stores, Western Bakery, DeGregory's Fine Foods, and Bellevue Gifts. Now is the time to reach your Grand Bahama market with affordable packages, including print and digital. Call GB News Sales Representative Kavandre at 822-6717 or message him on WhatsApp for ad rates. Classified ads are now available every Tuesday as well. Keep up with everything Grand Bahamian every Tuesday in the Nassau Guardian. Now let me see now. 326 EPIC. Hello? Hello? This this epic epic e battery? This Miss Bueller from around the corner. I hear you're selling tires now on Wolf Road too. Praise the Lord. It's about time. I live Fox Hill and Fire Trail. It's too far. That ain't all. They open Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. On Sunday and holiday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. My brother Sam, he's a hacker. And he go right there and get fixed up. Call us at 326 Epic. We ship also to the family island. This is Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, live and in full effect here. The Foundation, 96.9 FM Radio. Howard Grant and your company just being able to Give you sort of a post synopsis of what's happening um, um, uh, of uh, the Free National Movement's uh, Convention 2024. I want to be able to read something that is signed off by Sefint Roll in his capacity as Secretary Gen General of the organization. It's dated June 3rd, 2024. Uh, the subject is party officers elected Convention 2024. And this is for the Central Control Association of the Chairman Delegates and Supporters of the Free National Movement. It says the leader, Michael Pintard, Deputy Leader, Shannon Cartwright, Chairman Dwayne Sands, Secretary General, Sefent Roll, 
Treasurer Dwight S. L. Sawyer, Deputy Chairman Travis Rowe, I'm sorry, Travis Robinson, Sean L. Ferguson, Vice Chairman D'Angelo Ferguson, Dave, David Thompson, Lincoln R. Deal II, Gabriel McKenzie, and Darnani Roll, Darnari Roll, uh, Dec uh, Deputy Secretary General at Pakisha Parker Edgecombe, uh, Christy Ca Campbell, all right? Assistant Central Secretary General, Heather McDonald, Hannah Miller, Natasha Russell, Sob Sobian Riley, Celine Scott, Deputy Treasurer, Inga Boswick, Kenneth Ken Lightburn, Assistant Treasurer, Brian B. Brown, Ursula Dane, Marco Carey, Nathan Higgs, Nathan Higgs Sr., Carlisle W. F. Bethel, uh, Chaplain Gregory K. Minnis Sr., Assistant Chaplain Pamela Hart, Charlene St., John C. Wallace, Anne Russell, and John Mont, Montpetit. Treasurer Clement Penn Jr., Sterling L. Clare, Janie Taylor, Alvin Brown Sr., Andrew Drew Burrows, Ricardo L. Dean Sr., Aaron Moss, Aldrin Albrey, Lester Dawkins Jr., Dalio Dialo uh, Roll and Sergeant of Arms Hector Hepburn, Deputy Sergeant of Arms Harold uh, um, Harold Adderley Mandel Miller, Chief Protocol Officer Marisol Molling, Deputy Protocol Officers Kathy Lang, uh, Sarah Gibbs, Damian Fox Gibbs, uh, Gibson, Casey Colley, and Kajane, is that, is that? Kaljane Russell. Kaljane Russell. And that's the officers, all those elected persons in the Free National Movement who's won. Congratulations to all, 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 all in sundry who's actually won in this particular capacity. He's grateful to be able to read these things. On the break, I got a couple telephone calls saying, how would you be way too decent? You need to stop. Now, the reason why people could call me and say, how would you be too decent and not saying, how would you don't know the information is because I do know the information. I really do. I think you know that I know also. I have, this is what the entire objective was for the past two weeks. Now, a lot of persons are calling in and being able to text in to talk more strategically about this sort of an idea. And you would have heard uh, the chairman of the organization take on a very strong, chairman of the organization, the Progressive Liberal Party, take on a very strong approach to be able to say that the dragon still has a sting in his tail which was indicating that the old dragon, quote-unquote, uh, some of the juggernauts within the FNM, the head honcho in this particular capacity, Hubert Ingram, would still have a sting in his tail. I'm sure he meant scorpion. It's peculiar. I'm not going to fight him. Anyway, let's go into the conversation. Um, Hubert Ingram took on a position um, as he... As he Spoke to, and I'm going to send this to my, I'm going to send this to my producer so you could be able to hear it. Now, I want to be decent. I don't want, listen, man, I believe that the free national movement has gone through enough hell. And it's not my desire to be able to see the, con, the uh, anyone from a political standpoint find themselves um, in this sort of an uphill battle. I do want to have a transparent conversation with you. I really do. Right. But is it going to be to the detriment of the free national movement as it relates to the mending, the healing that's necessary from this juncture forward? I just want to know that. Are we going to risk the the uh, the maturing and the developing and and, you know, the forward movement of the organization for the purposes of being able to <laughs> have fodder? I don't I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can be able to do those things. I just want to be as decent as possible. We do know some things. We do know that uh, Hubert Ingram has taken on this kind of a very strong position and say, let's get there early and let's lay this, put this thing to bed quick. We know that. I've said that on the break. Before we went to the break, I said to you, this was the first time that there have been any significant internal campaign. And when a particular call comes to your phone, your phone ring off, only a number you saved to remember their name that used to only call out to them that you've never seen or received a call from them and your phone ring off and you see a name on your phone and you answer that, yes, Papa. That yes was ever expansive. 
And if there was a significant request that you support a particular party and you made a commitment that you would do that, not only for you, but for the forward movement of the organization, that is what we've seen. You can't fight them for this strategy. I, you don't fight them. You may think it's indecent. You may think it's wrong. Democracy is allowing persons to make a choice, a decision for the path they want to choose. It doesn't neglect or negate from the fact that we can still influence. And we, we identify this strategic influence and put it before you. You still make this decision. The lines are wide open. Be a part of the conversation. 323-6232, 325-4316, 325-4259. 3, Anywhere from the family of islands, 242-300-5720. Hit me up, 422-4796. Call on the line. Go ahead. Yes, yes. I tell you how we could say, hey, Howard. What's up, man? You're right here. We can do it this way. We working with Pentad because he working with me. I like we this. We can do it the Bahamian way, eh? I like this. Um, but, but, but Howard, on a more serious note, you can clearly see crime escalating. Youth running away from home because yes. they're looking for hope somewhere else. Because they're looking up ahead and they see men who want to die in politics. Look, the retirement age is 65. Tell Foxel and Kalani that. <laughs> Why you want to die there? Let the young people move. And guess what? When Pentad becomes prime minister, the crime will have a definite positive effect. It will drop. Okay, so we need to pivot away from this old, my daughter, me, um, She's, I don't want to use that word, but you know when you're old, they, they find words for you. Rusty old man. Mm -hmm. um, we need to move away from that because, look, very little to offer now because they've been, out of, they've been out of a womb for so long, mm. they dry and cold. So obviously there's really nothing left for them to offer. And oh. you remember at, I think, Mr. Roker's funeral, Archbishop Keith Cartwright said, you know, he was a great man, integrity and all that good stuff, and... and, and we need our men who are coming up, the younger one, need to pattern themselves after him because he was a nation builder. All right? Mm -hmm. and, and he said mm -hmm. his life is one that we should follow because it was one of integrity, and he was incorruptible. You, can't, you couldn't point a finger at him. Mm -hmm. So those who wish to serve, he said, need to take pattern after Loftus Roker life because it looks like instead of coming to serve, they come to thief. And he said it. So I think when Pintard becomes the next prime minister, we will wash away all these old heads who won't, won't they, you know, they won't, they won't take us to the grave with them. I hear what you say, and you sound like you're over the age of 50. Yeah, I'm 65, and I know, I know when to let young people move. And so you believe, that, now, now this is how I feel about, mm -hmm. about, okay, so this is how I feel about it. I believe that youth should be given an opportunity, but I believe that we should have a direct connection to the advisors that could help us navigate these things. I, I do believe of course. that. But you can tell, you see, Pinta, he listens. And the most important thing to do in the conversation is to listen. Sometimes I listen to Guardian Radio, four people talking at the same time. But, you know, I can't hear what nobody's saying. Now, I know, I, I know there's some people down south who you can have 20 people speaking and everybody understand what they're saying. But we ain't that good yet, eh? But let the young people take the lead, and you be there showing them, and, and, and have an open door so that they could come and say, Blake, I bucked my toe. You know, I saw that. I remember I warned you about that. And then pick them up. Instead of walking on them, pick them up and let them go again. And you would see that the young people will find an interest in this country if we let the young people run the country. You believe Pintar has that attractability to pull your people in? the guy is the poet. He, 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 he has, he has the gift, and I, 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 I've been to his, his, his place, and if he wrote them, he could write the script for the Bahamas. I listened to that, and I said, no one helped Pintard with this. He wrote this. You, I, you understand what I'm saying? I listened to that. You, you, you saw that, eh? Okay, so from the length of it, I knew he wrote that, mm -hmm. and from the depth of it, I knew he wrote that. The way he, the way he delivered it, you know, was from his soul. Yeah. But see, we have men in politics who are void of souls, and you just, you just had one on the news talking a bunch of foolishness, who, 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 the, the Fox Hill guy, he wants to die there. He wants to die in Parliament. What is this? Give me a break, man. <laughs> I appreciate your telephone call. Thank all you right, so very right. kindly, man. Thank you so very kindly for that. Um, I have... Uh, I was a young man with uh, this sort of an ego approach and relentless, um, you know, testosterone that says that I can do it now. 
I could feel my strength. I knew I'm, uh, you know, very superficially gauging myself in these particular positions. And life hadn't taken me through the significant tribulation to accept and be humble enough to be able to navigate, to listen, to open myself to um, the concepts and ideas that exist based upon experience. I wasn't there yet. Testosterone was full of, I was full of the thing. Angry that these old people would be here. Angry until I sit down. And I've always enjoyed sitting down and listening to them. I listened for stories, for giggles and kicks and giggles, but I never listened for substance. I never listened for the position of where they lived, where that lion lived in them. I never listened before. But with maturity and with tribulation, I learned to take my time and listen to them. All my friends older than me, anyone who I consider a friend, I'm not talking about for my youth. I'm talking about the decisions that I make in my uh, in this position that I am in and I'm moving into the future. I've identified men and women who have maturity, who have life experience that can help me. I would like to be, and I tell you this, I would like to be able to, to sit at the feet of a, a Maurice Moore, a Hubert Ingram, a Perry Christie, all these men. I've seen their faults. I've seen. I've, they've, they've, it's already played out before us. And so now I could make a determination as to whether or not I accept this. I have a SWOT analysis of every one of their lives. They've lived it out in the public. And as a result of it, I can be able to take from this playbook and be able to make myself stronger in the position of service and servitude to the Bahamian people in the event that I find my... And I say I, I don't mean me. I mean we, collectively. This is our responsibility. We can find ourselves stronger if we take from their playbook, apply it to our lives, and put ourselves in the position of servitude. Some of these men, some of these men who've served over the course of time have fallen to a great deal of things. To the power, they've become power hungry. To the name recognition status. To the idea of supremacy. That ego has overshadowed a lot of their lives. I can't put it on all. I can put it on, I can say a lot. But they still have value. I am not going to kill anyone before time. I'm not going to make this pronouncement for a political death or a physical death in any aspect. I believe, watch me, let's be decent. Let's be decent. There are some politicians that will not pass until that cycle comes back for the indifference that they've levied against people. Can I say this? There are some men that will not pass physically, politically, emotionally, from a religious standpoint and otherwise, until that thing comes bound full circle and they find themselves humiliated as a result of what they would have done in their past. Because this life, this life, and life, you could rest assured and be sure that God is, will not be mocked. If you are a man of faith, in this country of faith, and you seek to do injustice to people, you may find yourself strong until the end. But my God, when that thing come to you, it can come hard. You may be able to run far, but you can't run long. It can catch up with you. So all we have to do is wait. Grammy say time is longer than rope. And only maturity could say that to us. All I say to all you men and women out there who have aspirations for politics, just observe the life outside, off the camera, on the camera, observe the life of these leaders and assess it with a SWOT analysis. SWOT, strength, their weaknesses, their opportunities, and their threats. Apply it to your life for service for a better Bahama land. I don't want to kill none of them. We need all of them as long as they live in and they're willing to give. But that has to be for a better Bahama land. Let me take a next telephone call. Caller, go ahead. Good day, Howard. How are you doing? I'm good, man. What's happening? Your dialogue just now is right on point, man. And in terms of uh, Pintad and the FNF, Pintad, I was in his uh, constituency in a free port, mm -hmm. Marco City. Yeah. Saw that man all the time. 
all the time. Caring, checking for consistent ones, and the behaving people. And I want to congratulate him on his victory at uh, the FNM convention as the leader. Absolutely. And I, I, I am sure this man will make a great prime minister for this country if he actually cares about the behaving people. Mm-hmm. He really, really cares about the behaving people. I don't know what um, Fred Mitchell is running on with, but it's with his statement. But obviously, he he is not in touch or knows nothing about this man and knows nothing about what the behaving people are looking for. Mm-hmm. Because I, I must say, I my family is PLP, and this man is the only option, I feel, who, who feels for the people, man. You understand? That's been done. You're not going in there and, and, and it's dry, teething and things from you and, and taking everything away from you. But he actually, he actually has a pulse on the behemoth people. Mm-hmm. He actually feels and, 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 and your pain and goes along with you. And this will be a great leader for our Bahamas. And Michael Pinta, we got your back. Trust me, we got your back. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so very kindly for that telephone call. Let me see if I can take one more telephone call. Call on the line with this live. Go ahead. Call on the line with this live. Go ahead. Call, are you there? Next call. Call on the line with this live. Go ahead. Yes, good afternoon. How you doing, Alan? What's up, Anton? Everything cool, man. How you doing? Anton, I could have taken calls on Saturday, you know. You wasn't watching the live, eh? I, 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 I was trying to tune in. Man, Anton, I said, they said, God said, Anton, if Anton watching, I would Anton a call. I you, had, didn't have the live, you didn't have the live going on with the elections, right? I had the live, no, 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 no. I started at right. five o'clock, five, around about six o'clock, like I told you, right? Right. And then I went right up to about 11 o'clock, 11.30. I wasn't, I wasn't able to tune in for the, um, um, for the uh, aftermath, but I was trying to keep up with some bits and pieces as it was being released regards to the action. And so that's what happened there. But um, uh, but but Howard, mm-hmm. you had a lot of conversation, and um, um, you know, just so, several things quickly. Let me let me just count across. I don't I don't foresee a coming together of the FNM with all of their um, uh, forces anytime soon, Howard. Realistically speaking, honestly speaking, because when you have a camp. That that feels that they were um, um, taken advantage of. That feels that the constitution of their party was abused, was not respected. That feels that there wasn't any transparency, no accountability in the internal electoral process during that general convention. That those kinds of wounds they don't heal easily, Howard. They do not heal easily, and those also speak to character and integrity, Howard. If, we, if we're going to have a real frank conversation and an honest one, right? And so I don't know how um, um, former Prime Minister Menace is going to factor in, but I don't see it coming together the way persons would like to see it come together nor in the manner that's being touted for it to come together. Additionally, I would, um, um, in my view, it took for all of those persons fueling up their, their, their energies to fight for an election process to bring out some spark of real fire from the FNM in my observations, right? Mm-hmm. Now that that is over, now that that is over, comes the real test, in my view, for the leader, um, um, who's been who's been who's been retained as the leader of the FNM and opposition, his real test will now come forward, and how he, if he's able, not how, if he's able to continue to keep the FNM fired up. I don't know how that's going to happen, Howard. Reverting back to to the original point, right? And then I would, additionally, persons speak about what they would like to see, right? Let me just tell you very quickly what I see. You saw all of the persons from the old guard that it took to line up behind Pentag, right, Howard? Mm -hmm. You learned a lot of information, as did I, listening to 
a lot of the um, um, the the interviews that you would have conducted with them while Minnis had his launch going, and also while the um, um, while the, uh, the the fair was going on, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And 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 how would I'll, I'll, I'll draw one example? Former Prime Minister Minnis. It is stated by his um, um, former PR and, and, and campaign uh, general that he would have afforded some some in the afternoon up to half a billion dollars in wealth, right? Mm-hmm. While he started as prime minister, right, Howard? Mm-hmm. And so, Howard, what do you think happens when Pintad takes real root? And it may not be this election, right? This one coming up, it may not be this one, but sometime in the future, if he is to form um, um, prime ministership and government in the country, realistically, I would answer me honestly, please. Then I'll say one more thing before you go. What do you think that means and what do you think would happen? Structure the question better for me. What you're saying to me, as a result of what the commitment, the conversations that we have, when Kevin... Yeah, let's, let's deal and with all it. the information that was revealed. Let's deal with it. When Kevin indicated that a certain party has gotten up to $500 million for minutes. Right. Right. For Minister's tenure and his position over those four and a half years as prime minister, right. certain persons were and endowed these persons with turned five against and a half. I mean, with five hundred million dollars. This is what he and indicated. Still turned against minutes. And what he, this is what he indicated, right? And, and they supported Pintard. Minutes. Now they now support Pintard, right? Right. And you're right. saying after Pintard is solidified and finds himself victorious in the event he's victorious at some point as prime minister. At some point, yeah. I like what you're saying. At some point, when he becomes prime minister, uh-huh. what now is the expectation for him yeah. to be able to ensure that he takes care of the, uh, the part? Do you part? realistically think there isn't an expectation, Howard? Does any of us believe that there isn't an expectation? There's always a well, price I to be paid. Me, I, certainly, I certainly would not fall into the fool's hearty conversation, a category of persons who would believe there won't be an expectation. And, there's and, no free, and Howard... Anton, there's and, no free lunch. Not, exactly. Not, not there's in no this free life. lunch. Not there's no life. free lunch. In addition to that, it took for all of the persons who had some some quarrel from, from one form or the other against the former prime minister, where they'd be, he had to ask for their resignation, where they'd be, he had to force them into resignation. All of these persons had to line up behind Pintad in order to get it done. What do you think that means if Pintad was to form government of the Bahamas? And then I'll, I'll end with this note. I'll end with this note right here, um, um, Howard. In my view, Howard, based on what I see within the AFNM, right? Can you hear me, Howard? I can hear you right here. In my view, Howard, based on what I see within the AFNM, the AFNM is going to have a very difficult time identifying individuals with good, clean names and characters to come to the forefront, pardon me? Go on, I'm listening to you. In order to come to the forefront and present themselves as trustworthy to the Bahamian people. Note, note the words that I'm using, Howard. And present themselves as trustworthy to the Bahamian people who are already feeling left out, left behind, done for. However, however, Howard, however, I say this to you. The only way Pentad can win an election in the foreseeable future is if the PLP by default beats itself by not doing what we know we ought to do. And that goes to Prime Minister Davis, Deputy Prime Minister Chester Cooper, and the entire cabinet. The only way the FNM can get into government in this country is if we don't take care of the Bahamian people and do as we promised we are going to do, including for our supporters. Thank you for the opportunity. God bless. I appreciate you, Anton. Thank you so much for your telephone call. You put a couple of things on the table. You got to let me touch it, ladies and gentlemen. I can touch it real quick. Then we can come back. I'd like to be able to talk about these things because uh, there are some things that I don't necessarily agree with with Anton. Anton is my guy. Uh, I'm not going to go against him, but I'm going. Let's go to, let's talk with transparency and accountability in this space. Let's talk with clarity in this space. Let's talk with a very clear understanding that this is not traditional politics anymore. That the country is moving. And with this kind of a move and this transition that's happening, there are different things coming to the table. Let's deal with it. First thing he started to talk about, the coming together to the free national movement and that, he, that this kind of a wound that significantly entrenched in the organization, the wound that existed between Phil Galanis and um, uh, Bernard Nottage and Perry... I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The wound that existed between Minnis and, 
and Pinton. Uh, see, come, come, that's, you, you see what I did there? You see what I did there? You see what I did there? These things are all mendable. There is nothing gushing. There's no, there's no gulf that exists in the organization that can't be mended. There's no golfing again. Let me say, I can say this to you, and people don't, they think, you, they think I don't know. But I'm very sharp at this thing. Anytime you call me and on speaker, I assume that I'm being recorded. Right off the top. Anytime there is a peculiar number that hits my telephone, I assume that I'm being recorded. I now have the responsibility to be able to remain above board and not casual even if I am aggressive in my position, to present my convictions and remain consistent in what I believe in. So when telephone calls come to, the tel uh, to me and start to talk about one thing or another, you have to remain consistent. You have to remain in your conviction. And this is what your beliefs are. This is the party. After the election, people will come to me, boy, how would I was on the phone when you did this? Boy, Jesus, boy, how would you this, you that, you the next thing? No, because, because I believe in this. And I believe strong in, in what I say. And because I don't have to yield to anyone and ask them favor, I don't have to shift my words, my convictions, and my positions. Now, that happens a lot in politics. And the only thing that could stop this sort of amending, this mending in the organization, is if you have closed your heart, your ideas, to the constitution of the organization. When I've asked Iram for his position, and in the interim, when I've asked uh, Ellsworth Johnson of their, of their position as to whether or not they support one or the other, uh, this is prior to, this is prior to. Ellsworth has always remained consistent that I'm a free national movement member, and I'm consistent to the, the, the pillars of the organization. Iram has indicated the exact same thing. Now, uh, save their individual choice when it comes down to voting, that's their business. But for, for the purposes of public consumption, they've indicated what they were supposed to say. Listen, I is a F and M. If you're taking this posture and position to say that I am an F and M uh, with a prerequisite, then sir, you're not an F and M. You need to stop it. If there is a posture and position that you've taken as it relates to, to, to the PLP, and I'm a PLP with a prerequisite, that says, I'm a Lyndon Pinlin PLP. I know Perry Christie PLP. Sir, you need to shut up. Just shut up. Because I only know one thing that has come out of parties after your convention. One thing. That your grassroots shout and that is stitched on the heart and the lapel of men and women that serve in your organization. One leader. That's what you're saying. At the end of it all, if you have an allegiance to the organization, you serve the leader. There's no need for chatter. There's no need for these particular things. You wait in the wings for your time to get into leadership and take your influence with you. Build your political collateral and find yourself in the organization that you could change for growth. The FNM can mend. The PLP has mended significantly, even after great defeat, even after uh, uh, your leader was rejected and we thought you would fall apart. You remind us of your strength. You remind us of how long you've been doing this, that you are the oldest organization in the country, and you always find your way back to True North. The FNM has done so also. Now this, before you get to this general election, will be Pintard's greatest accomplishment. If he could be able to get, because that's the work that you need to do now. If you could get the party together, my God, this could bode well for you. How does he keep that momentum? That's the second thing that you do. You put that there. How does he retain the momentum? You better stay close to those particular persons now. Those men and women that served you, that uh, committed themselves to your service and say that I serve Pintard in this particular capacity and I remain uh, uh, committed to Pintard, you better get money from them. Can I say this? Can we talk like this? This is the time to ensure that you retain the momentum, that you incorporate the technology that you spoke of, that doc Dr. Minister started, that you could be able to amplify. You incorporate the technologies, you incorporate those things, and you fire up the constituencies to be able to ensure that the next general election, you got what it takes. That's what you do now. But it got, that can take money. And then thirdly, Anton, you started to talk about this position as to whether or not the, 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 the chickens come home to roost. One day out of seven, there is no free lunch, Anton. There's no free lunch. None of us could say um, what 
conversations have been had, if there's any. None of us can say that. I won't speculate, I won't indicate, I won't do on any of those things, but I know one thing. That these alliances cost money. <laughs> this allegiance causes money. And you can't get to your great aspirations and goals without being able to form public-private partnerships. This is an internal PPP. And once there is no detriment and breaking of the organization, then we should see some things happen in the future. I am sure that it'll be unraveled. That's just how these things go. Historically, there has always been this position. And this also exists within the, uh, the, the, the PLP. Let's not pretend. Let's not pretend. Maybe as a result of the, the hue of this particular individual that we speak of that exists within the free national movement, movement you, you assume because he is so bright that you assume that we could be able to speak about these things. But there are those of a, a darker hue that exude and expect the exact same thing in the PLP. Stop it. And you know it's the truth, Anton. They expect the exact same thing in the PLP. In fact, there has been speculations right now afoot, my God, that exists with the acquisition of another government entity right now, today. Today. Of those men and women who have served the PLP from time immemorial. Let's be decent when we say these things. Peter ain't no better than Paul. And if we're going to deal with the eradication of corruption, the eradication of this kind of a totalitarian concept, the eradication of those particular persons always relentlessly being able to rest their hand in the cookie bag, in the cookie jar, then we have to be balanced on both sides. Now, other than that, we are playing the game to get to the objective. And I hate to describe it as a game, but obviously, <laughs> this, ain't check this ain't checkers. This is chess. Now, we're hoping that Michael Pintard has the wherewithal and the relationship, the steadfast conviction, the position. And I said this to him. If you could retain that conviction, then you're going to be successful in the future. Quick commercial break, guys. We're going to be right back after this. Looking for a breakfast that will wake up your taste buds and kickstart your day? Well, Burger King NASA has got you covered with the new Angry Chris Sandwich. Made with fluffy eggs, melted cheese, jalapenos, a spicy sauce, and your choice of ham, sausage, or bacon on a warm croissant. Make it a combo and add our signature hash browns and your choice of coffee, tea, or orange juice for a great way to start your day. Spice up your breakfast with a new Angry Chris Sandwich combo only at Burger King NASA. Bonneville Bones, established in 1970, is the leader in men's fashion in the Bahamas. We're conveniently located in the Mall at Marathon and the Harbor Bay Shopping Plaza, and fully stocked with everything you need for all occasions. Our Harbor Bay location is one door north of Alive, with the black and white signage of Bonneville Boutique. Both locations are open from 10 to 7 p.m., Monday through Saturday. Bonneville Bones and Bonneville Boutique, still the leader in men's fashion. Located in the Mall at Marathon and the Harbor Bay Shopping Plaza. Tired of banks forcing you to use technology to bank the way they want you to? Your convenience is important. So no matter what your banking needs, Commonwealth Bank's friendly staff are always available in branch for that personal one-on-one -on -one service. But when you choose technology, our online and mobile banking app offers you state-of-the-art functionality. The choice is yours. Commonwealth Bank. Bank the way you want. Here's to the go-getters, the early risers, and the late-night dreamers. You, the visionaries, painting futures in your mind. In your studio, your office, your sacred space. Here's to the adventurers, explorers of every realm. To you, the innovators, turning the cogs of progress. In a world where connection is a lifeline, a pathway to possibilities. Alive is the perfect connection for everyone, every lifestyle, every day. Visit BeAlive.com today. Now let me see now. 326 EPIC. Hello? Hello? This this epic, e epic battery? This Miss Bueller from around the corner. I hear you are selling tires now on Wolf Road 2. Praise the Lord. It's about time. 
I live Fox Hill and Fire Trail. It's too far. That ain't all. They open Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. On Sunday and holiday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. My brother Sam, he's a hacker and he could go right there and get fixed up. Call us at 326 Epic. We ship also to the family island. This is Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The foundation. 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 And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM radio. The lines are wide open, 323-622-325-4316, anywhere for the family of violence, 242-300-5720. Hit me up on that on that thing. I just want to talk about it, and I, and I want to be as decent as possible. As I just, I've been trying to be as decent as possible. I don't want to give this kind of an idea, a way that I want to talk about free national movement, business, and this, that, and all these things. I just want to be decent. I think that the organization is absolutely wounded. Yes. I believe that there's a gap and a, and, a, and a gushing wound that does no, it doesn't do well by being able to have, because I listen to, uh, I well, okay, so listen, I don't have, I'm not in any of your chat groups. I, I'm not. I'm not. Okay? I don't have the time. It's an exhausting thing to listen to your chat groups. But I did have a couple friends over, and they were pressing play on these chat groups and listening to these chat groups and some voices that I've known. Let it go. Can I say this to you? Let it go. Close these chat rooms down. I'm not in your business. Chairman, Free National Movement, Dwayne Sands, make a clarion call, identify the administrators, and being able to extend um, uh, to them. And, and thanks for them to being able to create a space for persons to be able to have this sort of a discourse and for you to capture information that you need. But these groups are doing no one well. Can I say that? It just won't be decent. Either you're on board or you're off. There's no need to relentlessly and perpetually pour salt in a wound that seeks to mend. Come on. This is, and you, you all celebrate this sort of an idea of a dissident that exists in there. My God, you all need an exorcist. Oh, the spirit of the dissident exists in you. This sounds like a haunted house. You need an exorcism. This dissident, there could be indifference that exists for a time or a season. But there should not be relentless dissidents. And then you try to be able to pass it off as democracy. This is wild. Let's be decent. This is indecent. You cannot relentlessly have a conversation about a dissident spirit that exists in the free national movement, pass it off as democracy, and expect the organization to mend and find true victory. If you're going to talk about this sort of an idea, that euphoric feeling that exists in people's chest and heart, when the, 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 the Union Jack fell, right? And the Bahamian flag rose. And then you translate that exact same feeling in 1992 after some 25 years of leadership under the PLP and transitioning and moving away from the constitution and the preamble of what our expectations is in the Bahamas to see a new leader come in under the country. And you knew at that point that the, that the former prime minister Lyndon Pinlin was not a god. And you gave Hubert Ingram an opportunity and you celebrated. How can you ever get to that euphoric feeling if you keep throwing salt in the wound? How? How can we ever get back to mending? How is your children ever going to be involved in the political process in this country to be able to change it if the only thing they see is you cussing all day on your phone? Well, Jesus God, let me tell you something. Uh, good afternoon, group. I want to say to the whole people, like, I'm sick and tired of this pent out them. Let me tell you something. Dwayne, you all need to stop it, man. Stop it. You didn't get beat. It finished. You should have cried on the weekend. 
if your tears are not dried, keep crying home. When you finish with that, <laughs> when you finish with your crying, then get back up and get back to work. There's a greater thing here than you and your little feelings, man. Get your life together. If not, get off the bus. And you'll hate when people say, well, leave then. But no one have time to deal with you if they're trying to be able to capture something greater. Let's be decent about these things. There's immaturity in politics. Mature up and move forward. The party will be here longer than you. You get my, I'm leaving this organization, organization 50 years old, you know. I'm leaving this organization, I'll never return. Next year, the organization 51. Talk to me. 52, 53. It keeps growing whether or not you contribute. Make up your mind to contribute or leave. Let's be decent about these things. It helps no one. And stop passing off the spirit of a dissident. The one true thing that God helps, the hates, is uh, uh, people strife, uh, stirring up strife and discord among the brethren. That's it, man. Stop it. God hate that. Stirring up strife against amongst the brethren. And when we are part of an organization, we are part of a brotherhood. We are brethren. Don't stir up strife in the, in, in the brotherhood. Stop it. Be decent. Next telephone call. Telephone call. Hey, Howard. Hey, how you doing? See Alan Johnson here. What's up, see Alan? How you doing, man? Congratulations, Mr. Michael Pintard and the team of people that came up victorious. You can join the FNM this now? Week, this weekend. Huh? You can join the FNM yeah. now? I'm looking for my... I'm trying to see what size shirt I wear now. Uh, you don't even need no shirt. Just go there. Just go there and get huh? your paper and send a picture to me. Uh, pay your dues <laughs> and send the pictures to me. Let me see a card. They just give you a card. <laughs> yeah, but, 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 hey, but let me tell you Let me tell you why the FNM is extremely attractive now. The, the, the PLP is demanding uniformity and thought. And the S and M is, is is requiring diversity of thought that we need to build the entire Bahamas, and that is very very important to me, especially now with the young children. You should know that Howard, that you mm -hmm. you now live for your children rather than you, mm -hmm. and so you don't go by emotions, you don't go by formal allegiances, whatever. You make the decisions in the in the order of God, family, country, and everybody else. And so, if you're choosing for country that aligns with family and God and you can't be wrong. But just let me talk about what the PLP is doing. I notice how they have pivoted from being the champion of menace to simply becoming an expert of what the FNM needs to do while ignoring what they should be doing for the country. They mm -hmm. are in governance. And if they knew as much about governance as they seem to know about the FNM, we would be in good hands. Mm -hmm. And so what we're getting is marketing impact. And now you'll see where the PLP is now moving to uh, almost like a, a personal attack. This is what you know they say, when you can't attack ideas, you attack people. And so what the humans have to do is recognize is that unstoppable change isn't coming. Unstoppable change is here. And now we move to a period of inclusivity, a conversation about a new economy, a conversation about that unfilled promise from our forefathers. And if you are not capable of taking us from where we should have been for the last 50 years from one of uh, uh, political power to economic power, I think they should just simply move out of the way. Because I do believe a collective intelligence is now present in behemoths. We have spent 50 years of preparing, so spending maybe hundreds of millions, of not billions of dollars on education. I am one to believe that behemoths have not left. They were simply parked outside of the Bahamas because no one has made space for them to drive back home or come back home. And that's the conversation that you will see and will have coming out of Mr. Michael Pintat and his team. He already now, started that. He's already started that. With, no, um, that's what I'm saying to you. Yeah. He, right, I'm saying is that because he represents the collective intelligence of all of us as opposed to an individual... Uh, but I want to say this, Seattle, and, and, and engage me for two seconds. That yes. uh, what you indicated was an unstoppable change. Now we know that uh, you say unstoppable change. The model is unstoppable together. 
the inevitability of change is that whether you like it or not, it's going to happen. However, yes. the only thing could happen here is that we're unstoppable together. Just like well, the add, men and I'm women that, that unified no. uh, right. under the Tower of Babel. Even God had to come down and be able to trouble their minds and their languages so they could be able to stop because they are, once unified, they're they are absolutely unstoppable together. And the only thing that we have here now is try to find out whether or not the FNM could be able to retain and maintain this sort of uh, uh, this, this unity and pulling people together and being able to keep this momentum moving forward because that's the only thing that's unstoppable as we move forward. As soon as there's a break in the line, everyone will scatter into their own spaces. No, as but, soon but as Howard, there's a break in the line. Howard, we are past the organization, the organization, you know, the FNM is starting right now easily with 85 to 90 percent of the individuals. Remember, if you count by the delegates, which is representative of the opinion of the collective, then you now have 75 percent. So you could assume that 100 percent of those, anyone that's disenfranchised is not going to stay away. But there'll be more people coming in than they'll be going out. And so it is, you're right, and so it is stronger together. And the, 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 of the possibilities become exponential. And so the, the key now is not to represent the ideology, exclusivity, exclusive of the organization, but to represent the collective desires of all behemoths. And that's where this conversation begins, where the vacuum now exists in governance, because there's nothing should be for us without us. And so we're simply saying, as we're talking about all these new investments, but where is it that includes behemoths? Where is like it, it. it gives us access to the economy, besides like the jobs. I like it. And so, go ahead, Tiana. Just simply watch the shift, the conversation. And I put to you, Michael Pintard team will begin. I ain't going to let you say nothing else outside. on the radio. I'm not going to let yeah. you say nothing else on the radio until you show me your <laughs> F&M badge and you put your hat on. Amen. But, 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 go right you. down to... Is, would the shirt make me change the way I now think? No, no, no. Your registration with your <laughs> FNM card would say C. Allen Johnson. I want to see that. Family. The, and family. Put the whole put family in there and send it over. <laughs> I appreciate your telephone call, my brother. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much, man. Thank you so much for those things. Guys, I want to be able to read a few of these texts before we get out of here. It says, don't underestimate the PLP's tactics. They are always the best at disguises and facades. They know how they, they, know how they come to office. They always present a beautiful cake. For all to eat. And then after one bite, you find out it's styrofoam. <laughs> As I always say, this is a Texas coming through, right? I'm not going to fight you. That's a Texas coming through. So it says the PLP is afraid of Pintard. And it's clear. That's a Texas coming through. It says, uh, would Pintard as leader, with Pintard as leader, the FNM is now a legitimate option. And that's now has to earn support based on how and what they present. This is a text is coming through. It says, uh, Hi, Howard. Do you think that the Bahamian government will increase minimum wage uh, to $10 an hour, uh, which is almost 50%, because it's, it's $5.25 now? Um, the next conversation that we expect for minimum wage is a conversation about living wage, because minimum wage has nothing to do with living wage. And the only way that that could happen is you identify industries and forge relationships, uh, global partnerships to ensure that we can empower and diversify the economy beyond tourism, beyond agriculture, beyond these conversations. Uh, that's the only way that's going to happen. But it needs to happen. Let's, let's talk about these things. This is uh, Happy Joyce Monday, Howard, Brother Grant. Excellent weekend, Bahamas, Michael Pintard. Congratulations to the winner. And we are happy and excited. But now, uh, better now and better to come. For the Bahamas, right? Unfortunately, Dr. Menis uh, was not honest with the Bahamian people during his time in office. This is from Rudy. Shouts out to Rudy in Grand Bahama, Mayor Grand Bahama, being able to do those things. This is last caller was off bad. Dr. Menis was not, uh, does, Dr. Menis has no Hail Mary. Even if Michael Pintar doesn't win in the next election, he will definitely pick up more seats uh, that will win leadership. I agree with you. And I want to talk about that also because um, there was an expectation for former Prime Minister Ingram to go down to West Grand Bahama and speak to the by-election and be able to speak really for Ricardo Grant. He did that a little bit, 
but he really focused on this sort of an idea of being able to diversify the leadership in various constituencies as opposed to being able to eradicate the government. He, he really pushed the idea of being able to identify character qualities and characteristics of leadership and individuals and in constituencies and to, to vote for people in constituencies as opposed to being able to just being, to get rid of leadership. And so that's really what he's pushed for. And this text that talks about uh, picking up more seats, I think it leads to that. Uh, but it's a peculiar conversation because you're indicating to me, even if he doesn't win, let's talk about these things. So he says, um, what I wanted to hear was what their game plan was to come back to the, from the major loss that the free national movement had suffered and how they should decide on who should lead the person with a game plan to come back after those laws and the loss of election. Other than that, what criteria did the voting party use to decide how to cast their vote? The criteria is quite clear. Get rid of menace. That was the entire criteria. Um, let me see if we can pay 30 seconds of this thing. You got it together? Uh, before I get out of here, ladies and gentlemen, this is what former Prime Minister Ingram had to say about that. My actions spoke very loudly and very clearly, and there could be no doubt in his mind that I thought his time had passed. Future. Michael Pinto. <laughs> he didn't play the little part that says, is one and done. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the foundation. We're going to talk more about these things. Grateful to be able to do this. I'm grateful that you're here and you're calling in on a consistent basis. Tomorrow, join me as you break it down a little bit more. Let me see if I can get my guy in the studio and kind of chop these things down. This is the foundation with Howard Grant. Guys, have a beautiful day. We will see you tomorrow right here on 96.9 FM Radio. Howard Grant, the foundation. God's very see you tomorrow. <laughs> Foundation. Foundation.